All right. Let's get into some prayer. The Lord will help me out with this. Father God, just um, we uh, just lift you up at this time, Lord. Just to dive into your word, Father God. Just let us, just help us understand it, Lord. Help uh, lives to be touched by it, Father God, and help us apply it, Lord. Um, and humble me, Father God, and uh, just to deliver your word with accuracy, Father God. And uh, we just lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're, <clears throat> we're in Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and give you a little bit of background first before we even get into the text. Um, so we have this rich book that Paul writes, Ephesus, about God's sovereign grace. Um, Timeline's about A.D. 62, so, you know, it's about 30-some-odd years um, after Jesus' um, death. Um, at the time, Paul was writing this letter um, while he was held in Rome. Uh, he's writing to born-again believers, okay, so we need to like understand that, that he's not writing to people that are not saved, he's writing to people that are born again to the city of Ephesus, okay? Um, he's reminding them, which is a main point in this scripture, is that he's reminding them of the redemptive work the Father has done through Christ. Um, we see, um, we see and we're reminded of the sovereign election, predestination, adoption of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit through this book that he's writing to Ephesus. Um, one thing we need to understand about Ephesus, too, they were very into magic. Um, we can read that back in uh, Acts 19.19. 19. It talks about the, the people are throwing their magic books into the fire because they got saved and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're just filled with joy. Uh, so we need to keep that in mind. So Paul is really trying to hit them with... Listen, you know, God is sovereign. God chose you. God has elected you, predestined you. You know, God is sovereign over all creation. You know, so just keep that in mind. So we'll just we'll dive into the text now. Verse 1. Um, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. And you were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus." so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and if it, this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. All right, so I'm going to go from verse 1. We'll just break this down expositionally. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins. So we were dead in sin, dead completely, spiritually dead, out the womb from Adam. We were born into sin, and we were dead. Like a bird on the ground, and it's dead, you cannot expect that bird to do anything. You can't expect that bird to get up and fly because it's dead. That's how we were. We were born sinners, dead spiritually, there's nothing that we could do. Paul is trying to drive this point right off verse 1 and saying, listen, you were dead. You were dead in your sins. There's no way that you could have possibly done anything to get salvation. It was all, and we're going to verse 2. And which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. So you once used to walk following Satan, okay, but... And just remember, because you were dead in your sin, you used to follow Satan. Satan basically was your father, and you used to sin, and you used to do all this stuff, you know, like disobedience towards God, and that was the way you once lived, okay? Among, verse 3, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. So you see the separation he's already putting. He's putting, saying... We once were our children of wrath. We were at enmity with God. We were at war with the Creator, but we're not, okay? You were dead in your sins. We were at war with God, but now you're over here, okay? So reminding them of, you know, 
what has happened to them. But, verse 4, But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. If you um, in Acts, we're going to have to turn there, I'll just uh, paraphrase it basically. Uh, uh, Acts 15, 19, Paul and uh, Peter are going out and they're saying, you know, they, they were proclaiming, they're saying, we, we've been saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. You know, that's the only reason why we're saved, you know, it's by, by grace, you know. So he's one saying this, that he made you alive now because of Christ. So God has used faith, which is the instrument, to, and Jesus Christ.